Hey, what's up, guys? This is Joey Young. Today, we are going to be talking about the Nano Reef Tank, and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and experiences in keeping a Nano and what you guys can expect when you guys are looking into keeping a reef. The very first thing that you'll notice in terms of differences between a planet tank or a freshwater tank is the cost. Now, I know that a lot of people have debated about this and I'm going to be really brutally honest in terms of the cost of keeping a reef tank is tremendously expensive. Um, and I'm not you know, saying that you can't do it under a budget or it can't be done cheaply. All that is very true. You can definitely set up a, you know, a reef tank, a small reef tank, whatever, fairly ex inexpensive, but at what cost? And what I mean by that is you're kind of going the cheapo route, I guess, and you're getting limited corals that normally I would say is not the things that you would want. Um, you know, in some cases there are corals that are very pretty, very gorgeous, and they're really inexpensive. But when you kind of want to get certain things like, you know, nice clownfish and not, you know, your basic ones, they get expensive. You know, nice corals that, you know, are exotic, more colors, you know, things like that, it is very expensive. I would say a majority of the costs other than the livestock portion of it is going to come in your equipment. All right, so I have a quick breakdown of the equipment um, in terms of costs when you're looking to get a reef. I'm not trying to deter anyone from getting a reef, but I kind of want to show you guys what it really costs to make a really good reef tank. And I'm talking about, you know, not the top end stuff, but also not the low end tier stuff. So this is kind of in the middle and this is to really benefit your tank and your livestock for the long run. Um, so this is just a quick breakdown. I'm gonna kind of run through them pretty fast. These numbers, you know, definitely can vary. I'm just kind of throwing it in here in terms of what it costs for my tank. And you can kind of get an idea in terms of the size, which is a 25 gallon nano versus if you were to get like, you know, 125 gallon. These numbers will definitely go up, obviously, and if you got a smaller tank, it will definitely go down. So the first thing is obviously a good filter. Um, you know, I bought a pretty decent filter, that which cost me $300. Um, you know, good lights, same thing. Uh, skimmer, um, normally, you know, when you buy a sump or some sort of filter, it doesn't come with a skimmer. But in this case, mine's did. So really, you know, you can really subtract this. But in general, you know, Generally, you would have to buy your own skimmer, so that's why I kind of drew that there because these are really key items to keeping a good reef tank. Uh, the next thing is a UV sterilizer. It's not needed, but highly, highly recommended. So generally, a good um, UV sterilizer runs around $100. The next portion is dry rock, obviously, $3 a pound. Um, when If you decide to get live rock, you know, there's pros and cons on both sides, but if you do get live rock, this number will basically double or sometimes even triple. Um, rule of thumb is about a pound a gallon um, in terms of your tank size and your rock. Uh, another really good investment is an RODI water um, unit basically to make your own water at home. Now it's very convenient because you don't have to run to the pet store um, and if you need water on weird hours or at the midnight or whatever, you don't have to wait until the next morning to run to your pet store. You can just make it on the fly. So definitely that I would say is a must. A good wave maker pump, um, this is really key as well. Um, these numbers, obviously you can get a cheaper one which is cheaper, but to get something decent, you're looking to spend at least a minimum of 120 bucks and the better ones would be the $300 ones, which is what I have. Um, obviously salt, um, you know, to mix obviously, you know, your salt with your water. Um, generally you buy them in bulk and they run around 40 to $50 um, and it will last you basically forever unless you have a pretty big size tank. Uh, some sort of salinity reading device. Um, generally, you know, a refractometer runs around $50. Um, the $100 portion would be basically something automated 
or automatic where you literally put two drops of water in it, you press a button and it reads the number for you. And that's what I have. Um, so much easier than looking through like a little scope and like, you know, focusing on it and guessing numbers. Way easier. Literally, you press a button. You, you, you press a button and it throws numbers back at you. Like, it can't get any easier than that. Um, <laughs> so, definitely highly recommend getting that um, versus anything else if you decide to keep you know your reef tank you know for long term because you you know every water change you're going to end up having to read it you know measure it and you know your et cetera et cetera you get the point highly recommend investing in that life sand usually it runs about thirty dollars a bag you know maybe two bags is what you know i put in here um depending on how deep uh, of a sand bed you want or no sand it'll save you thirty bucks totally up to you and the last thing is a parameter kit. By that I mean, you know, measuring your nitrites, nitrates, ammonias, um, your calcium, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so now that you guys kind of got an idea of what it really costs to kind of maintain or keep some sort of tank um, to even remotely decent, um, that is how much it will cost. Um, I'm not joking, it's definitely very expensive. So before you guys jump into reef, you know, budget it out, do your research, you know, make sure you guys have everything planned because you don't want to be stuck with buying something okay and then having it break down, you know, two, three months or, you know, next week even. Um, and then end up having to pay, you know, full retail for the better thing. Um, so basically, you just wasted, you know, X amount of money on your cheapo equipment. All that aside, you know, the point I'm trying to get across is it's expensive. Um, I don't care what anyone else says. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that says like, oh, it's cheap. You can get it for cheap. No, they're lying to you. It's expensive. Um, so keep that in mind uh, before you jump into reef. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of money, um, but it definitely pays off when you kind of have something really nice and beautiful to look at when you know when you come back home from work or you know you're relaxing and it's just great to see. Um, I'm going to be very honest with you. You're not going to see this kind of color um, in a freshwater tank. You know, there's definitely certain fish out there that will have very nice color. You know, cichlid, discus. Um, but in terms of coral and everything else, <laughs> you won't be able to see it. My, my dogs are uh, playing with their toys in the back of the squeaker. So with my very short experience with saltwater so far, um, you know, four to five months, you know, I've had really, you know, great results in terms of keeping a reef so far. You know, obviously, I had casualties, I had my hiccups, I had things I had to kind of go through. It's really the experience that you're looking for in terms of keeping a reef. It's something different. Um, it's a learning opportunity. And it's something that I believe everybody should get into at some point um, in their hobby career, I guess. Um, it's definitely worth the investment. To sum it all up, guys, uh, make sure you guys do your research. Um, look to be spending a lot of money in terms of equipment, livestock, and be patient. Um, I haven't really mentioned it in this uh, video as much, but patient is definitely key in keeping reef, whether it's you know introducing new things, um, cycling, etc. Um, take it slow. Um, take it like even slower than what you would do for a freshwater tank. And obviously the last thing is just have fun and enjoy it. Um, if you don't really enjoy what you're doing, um, especially when you're setting up a tank, um, then maybe it's not the thing for you because if you're going to have stress about it, then <laughs> it might not be worth it. But in the end, uh, definitely give it a try and I will see you guys next time. Peace.